This clunker is so old it doesn't even support SSH, but in this video, we're going to automate it. On these old Cisco Catalyst devices, they've got this yellow tag here that shows the manufacturing date. And the, the tag here on this one shows that it was manufactured in August 2006. NetConf, the first network automation protocol given to us by the IETF, wasn't even ratified until December 2006. This thing was manufactured before network automation was even an industry standard thing. And like I said, it's so old it doesn't even support SSH. You can only telnet into it. So can we automate these types of devices? Well, absolutely. Now, today's modern line of products, especially in the Cisco world, like the Cisco Catalyst line of devices, they run iOS XE. That's the new operating system on these Cisco iOS devices uh, because they're built with automation in mind. Now the DNA Center and the DNA Center platform can hook into these devices and control the entire network as one pane of glass. But these older devices weren't built with that in mind. We had to use the CLI to interact with these devices. Now Python gives us some libraries where we can issue CLI commands against these devices. But most of the time, the responses return to us in plain ASCII text. And if we're going to interact with that, well, we've got to write some really nasty regex in order to parse out the expressions and pull out the data that we want until now. Thanks to a group called Network2Code, they've taken the standard output that comes from a lot of CLI-based devices and turned them into basically templates so that it can parse the output out and translate it into JSON for us. So in this video, we're gonna dive in just now, get started by building a NetMiko script to run some commands against that device, and then turn that output into JSON that we can then program against. Let's go. So let me explain how this is going to work. The first library we're going to use is right here, ktbuyers slash NetMiko. If you go to github.com forward slash then, KT buyers forward slash NetMiko, it'll take you right here. This is the first library that we're going to be using so that we can interact directly with network device connection. You can see right here, SSH connections to network devices. This includes Cisco IOS or Cisco IOS over Telnet. It can handle Telnet. But this just gives us raw ASCII output. What we need to do then is parse that output. Now, luckily for us, under the hood, NetMiko comes with the ability to work with another library that Google provides to us called TextFSM. And what you can see here is this parses semi-structured text into Python tables. This is just the ability to parse that output into Python dictionaries or JSON output but it doesn't have the network device connections into it yet. This is just the tool that can parse the data if it has the correct template. So what we gotta do then is get the template ready. We're gonna use that network two code templates that they've provided us right here called NTC templates. So definitely a few things that we're gonna have to get installed here. Of course, all of those we can use pip. So we'll use pip install or pip three install if you're using Python and we'll say, NetMiko. NetMiko will automatically get TextFSM, and then we'll actually use this clone link right here in order to get the NTC templates. So with that set up, let's dive in. Okay, first things first, I wanna make sure I have the most up-to-date version of NetMiko installed on my machine. So I'll give it a sudo pip3, since I'm using Python 3, install NetMiko. Now I'm pretty sure I already have the most recent version, Yep, and it tells me all the requirements are satisfied, but if you don't, it'll go through that installation process right there. And I know that that also took care of, you see it right there, TextFSM and TextFSM. So we've got that installed too. That's part of NetMiko. So the next thing and the last thing that I need to get in order to fulfill all of these requests is to get the actual templates themselves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this down from GitHub by choosing to clone right here. I'll just click the copy button right there we're clicking it and copying i'll bring up my terminal and i'll move into the correct folder where i'm going to store my scripts now that i'm in this folder i'm going to give it a git clone and i'll paste that url right here and we can see it pulled down all of the objects 
Bringing up VS Code real quick, I should expect to see, there it is, NTC templates. Now here's the kicker. If I actually browse into this folder, you can see all of the, in fact, let's do this. Let's bring in the actual file explorer here. Documents, code samples, Python, networking, iOS, NTC templates, then templates. That's where I cloned it to. All of these items here, these are all of the different commands that you can run on the different platforms and it will be able to parse it out. So in this case, I'm really interested in the Cisco iOS commands, the Cisco iOS show commands. And let me, let me preface this one now by saying that the one command that it doesn't really have is it doesn't have show run. It has config partition route map and config partition access list, but there's not show run. But there is a lot of other really, really interesting stuff. Show route, show spanning tree, show IP interfaces, show IP interface brief. And we're going to cover those all now. And you can see how it looks once it's translated back into Python dictionaries. So we see that we have all of these templates. There's one thing that we have to do also in order to get this up and running. Let me clear my screen. We have to make sure that my entire environment knows where to find these templates. So what I have to do is I have to export an environment variable. And that environment variable is called net text FSM. Whenever NetMiko runs and you tell it to use TextFSM, it's automatically going to go to NetTextFSM and look for a directory where those templates are stored. So you can see by exporting NetTextFSM, NetMiko knows, oh, this is where all the templates are stored that I can use when I run these show commands. So if I press enter here, I can now say echo NetTextFSM. And there it is. Thinking about my checklist at this point, we've got NetMiko installed. That came with text FSM. We then cloned the NTC or Network2 code templates, and we created the net underscore text FSM environment variable. So that way NetMiko knows where to go to find all of the templates. It's in that folder right there where I cloned from the GitHub repository down to my local computer. At this point, we are totally ready to start scripting. So let me clear the screen and we'll bring up VS Code and do exactly that. In my iOS folder here on the right hand side of VS Code, I'm going to create a new file. We'll call this show IP interface brief.py and we'll press enter. Okay. First things first, I have to import all the correct libraries. Since I'm using environment variables, I'm gonna make sure I'm importing OS so that I can get the environment, vari envir blah, blah, environment variables from the operating system, as well as from my .env files. That's where I store my usernames and passwords. So I'll say from .env import load.env. On a new line, I'll make sure I run load.env. That way when the script starts, it comes to this .env file right here where my mouse is, and it loads all my usernames and passwords that are stored in that environment variable. But now I'm also going to say from netmiko import connect handler, because that's what we use to actually get connected to these devices. Now on this next chunk of code, I'm just gonna paste this in because there's no real reason for me to outline this other than to say, this is getting the usernames and passwords from those environment variables, as well as setting up what device it is that I'm connecting to. This is that Cisco iOS Telnet device, the IP address, the username, the password, the enable secret, and of course, port 23, since we're connecting over Telnet. But the real magic is gonna start happening on the next line. So we'll start a try block and we will open a connection using connect handler while unpacking the switch dictionary. The double stars here means it just takes all of these keys right here and breaks them out as part of the parameters used to instantiate the connect handler class. Fancy way of saying that the connect handler requires certain parameters here. You can see they're called args and those args are device type, IP, username, password, secret. So when we take the star star here of switch, it just unpacks this dictionary of things into this parentheses that's right here. So with this connection in place, we will make sure we enter the enable command here. That's what's going to be entering privilege mode. And this is where the magic is really going to happen. The output of my command, I want to be stored 
in an object called interfaces, in a variable called interfaces. So I'm going to say in the connection object we have, send the command. We'll open the parentheses to tell what command we want to send. Open quotes. Oops. Show IP interface brief. Now, before I go any further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the output of interfaces, close the connection, and make sure I set up my exception block here. We'll save and we'll run just to see that this connection is working and that we're getting just a plain ASCII output in return. Let's debug the script. Okay, there it is. This looks exactly like show IP interface brief, doesn't it? Yep, sure does. That means it's definitely working. How can we turn this into JSON? Well, it's just as simple as coming right back here, right where it says show IP interface brief, hit comma and say use underscore text FSM equals true. Now here's the thing, when we do this, it's gonna return interfaces as a Python dictionary. So what I wanna do is I wanna print this out in a pretty format. And one of the ways that we can print this out in a pretty format is to actually convert that Python dictionary into JSON just for printing purposes. Check this out. What I'll do at the very top here, I'll say import JSON. Now in my print statement, I can take this interfaces object, which at this point will be a Python dictionary and turn it into JSON. We'll say JSON.dumps to turn it into JSON. We'll close that in a parentheses and I'll say comma indent equals two. That'll format this JSON output with a pretty little output. So now let's run show IP interface brief and see what kind of output we get when we use TextFSM. Oh, look at that. Isn't that absolutely fascinating? Now everything is perfectly structured as a JSON object, or at least it's printed out as a JSON object, but it's being stored as a Python dictionary. So think about what we can do with this now. Check this out. I'll comment out that print line and we'll say for interface in interfaces. So it loops over each one of these interfaces and we'll find only the interfaces that are down. If interface, and I can see right here status, that's what I want to search for. So if interface status equals down print with Python 3 formatting, I can inject variables in here like interface INTF, which I see is the name of the interface, is down, exclamation mark. Let's go ahead and debug this and see what happens. Fascinating. Now I can see all of the interfaces that are actually down right now thanks to this Python scripting and parsing out what we've done with show IP interface brief. Let's see what else we can do with this. I'll create another new file and I'll call this span. Dot .py, and I'll simply paste all of the code that we just did in. Let me clean up the screen just a little bit. Uh, in this case, I'll change my show command to show spanning tree. I'll change my variable to stps for spanning trees, I guess. We'll delete out this for block. We'll uncomment the code. And now we'll pretty print out stps. Debug the script. Another pretty fascinating output here. Now I can see each interface's spanning tree configuration for each VLAN because it says Cisco after all, and they do have per VLAN spanning tree. So I can say for STP in STPS, we'll print an open line just for a line break, followed by Python three format function. We'll say each spanning tree instance that's returned to me, print interface dot, STP VLAN ID is currently in role STP role. Let's print that one out again. Again, very interesting format sorted by VLAN ID right there for me. And now I can see what my port statuses are and how they're currently interacting in a spanning tree environment. Let's do one more just to drive this thing home. I'll bring up my file browser again. We'll create another new file here. I'll code the, call this show INTS for show interfaces. We'll paste the code in. So now I'm going to change this to show interfaces status. That brings back a lot of interesting information that I want to use. And we can parse out that. You can do show interfaces, show interfaces status. 
There's a whole lot of different options that you can do when it comes to using the text FSM templates. Let's run show interface status and see what's returned to me here. Okay, a lot of interesting information again. We've got the port name. Name here would be the description, what kind of status it is, what VLAN it is, duplex speed, even the media type it is. So, you know, gigabit ethernet is what we got here. If I scroll all the way up, I can see that my trunk port here is listed as trunk under VLAN. So now with this output, I can say something like for interface in interfaces. If interface VLAN equals trunk print in Python formatting three again, interface port to get that interface name is a trunk. Now with this type of script, I can run show interface status and get a quick return to tell me exactly which ports are trunk. And then from there, I can debug it and get more information by running alternate commands or parsing out more info if that's what I desire to do. So let's scroll down and see what the output of this command was. Look at that. There's my trunk ports, one, six, 10, and 15. Python returned to me exactly the output that I was looking for. So yeah, modern day Cisco, every single modern Cisco platform that exists now has some form of API and all of them are different. Nexus API is different from Catalyst API, different from DNA, different from SD-WAN, different from Firepower, the list goes on and on and on. But the old school iOS devices can still be automated thanks to Python libraries like NetMiko, TextFSM, and Network2 Code or NTC's templates. So even though the old school legacy devices, you won't see that on the Cisco DevNet Associate exam, or at least it's not on the exam blueprint, no one's really taken the exam yet at the time of this recording, it doesn't mean you don't need to know how to automate these things because there's a decent chance out there in the wild you'll run into one of these old legacy devices or maybe you're dealing with a you know a home lab and you want to practice automating on your own at home following these basic steps you can get started automating anything in your environment so that's been getting started with automating your old legacy equipment thanks for stopping by y'all see you in the next one